In this video we'll talk about functions, we'll talk about four different ways to represent them, and we'll also be able to talk about what is and is not a function, how we can determine whether or not it's a function. So let's define what a function is. So a function is a pairing of values in which each input is matched, or is paired, I should say, with one, and I'll underline that, one output. Very important. So the idea is, if you think about the, uh, the traditional function machine, if I put in a five every time, I get a two. That'd be a function for that point. If I put in a 7 and I can get a 3, a 4, or a 12, that is not a function, just as an idea, thinking of it as a machine. So we can represent functions with equations, however, not all functions necessarily have equations. So like one example would be y equals 2x, and this one definitely, if I plug in something for x, I'll get a thing for y. Likewise, if I think about y equals x plus 9. Again, I plug in 1 for x, I get 10 for y. Same thing throughout. So an equation, pretty solid representation of a function, pretty hard to think of one that's not. Um, one example would be y equals plus or minus the square root of, say, x. So in this case, if I plug in 4, then I would have a positive 2 and a negative 2. I'd have two outputs. This would not be a function. So let's talk about t-charts. Another way we can represent these, if we think about it as ordered pairs, so usually you'll have like 0, 0, 1, 1, um, and then you can do uh, 3, 2. Sometimes it's useful to represent these in a t-chart. So the idea being I make a t-chart, here's my input value, here's my output value, and we always talk about ordered pairs, x, then y. So we have 0, 0, 1, 1, and then 3, 2. And that just kind of gives us a quick idea of how it matches up. Now in each of these, or in this column, I don't have any repeats. That's a good indicator that this is a function. Every time I plug in a 3, I get a 2. Every time I plug in a 1, I get a 1. Every time I plug in a 0, I get a 0. Now, one example where it's not necessarily a function would be if I have, let's start with 0, 0 again as an ordered pair. I'll do 1, 1, and then I'll do 1, 2. If I make my t-chart again, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, well, I've got a problem here. I have two x's that repeat, and then I have two y values. Now... Uh, a technicality if I change this up a little bit if I go 0 0 1 0 and 2 0 do I have a function technically I would because each of these inputs has exactly one output and it just so happens it's the same thing but when I plug in a 0 I get a 0 when I plug in a 1 I get a 0 when I plug in a 2 I get a 0 so these, the blue one and the green one, are functions. Those are cool. And this red one is not a function. So graphs are another way. And it's a natural extension of ordered pairs. We can do what they call the vertical line test. And what a vertical line test is, basically this tests whether or not it is a function or not. So if we consider a line, this would be a function because I don't have any repeats. If I draw vertical lines, I never cross this equation or this line more than once. Now if we alter this a little bit, if I have a function that say looks like this, or not a function, but some sort of graph that looks like this and I want to know is it a function, well, the answer would be no. I hit it three times, potentially, with one vertical line. And as long as it, it happens one time, I can determine this whole thing is not a function. 
Because, yeah, if I hit out here, I only hit it once. But in here, I hit it several times. The idea is if I hit it twice or more, it's not a function. So let's talk about maps. Maps are kind of like t-charts. So if I had the ordered pairs uh, 0, 0, 1, 1, and um, 2, 3. What I can do is put my input values here, so my domain values essentially, inputs and outputs. I'll have 1, or 0, 1, and 2, and then I'll have 0, 1, 3. And then I would draw lines for each one that matches. So in this case, this is a function. Each input only goes to one output. This is a really good illustration of a function, and it really can make things easier to see. So let's do another quick example, different ordered pairs. So I'll do 0, 0, um, 1, 1, and then 1, 3. So the trick here is to never repeat. So I've already got 0, 1, I don't have to repeat the 1 again. And then I'll have 0, 1, 3. So 0 goes to 0, 1 goes to 1, 1 also goes to 3. This would make it not a function because this 1 goes to two places, goes to two values. It can only ever go to 1. Now let's uh, do a different example here. So I've got 0, 0, 4, 0, and negative 5, 0. If I drew my map, I'd have 0, 4, negative 5, and it's going to go over to, well, <laughs> 0 in my output. Notice all these are going to the same spot, but that's okay because each input here only goes to one output. Therefore, this is a function.